In this video, I wanna talk all things the ankle joint, this fantastic joint that helps us to move. But we're gonna be talking about conditions like ankle sprains, tibialis posterior syndrome, we're gonna be talking uh, perineal tendonitis, plantar fasciitis, and all that good stuff. So let's dive straight in. And if you're new to the channel, my name's John, I'm a sports injury therapist. And at this channel, it's great to have you because we wanna be doing three simple things. Help you understand your body better so you can get rid of any pain, injuries, weaknesses, strive forward and hit your health and wellbeing goals. But in this one, I really want you to help you understand this joint. And as I said, I'm gonna mention all the structures that are involved in the conditions I just mentioned. What I would say is I'm not gonna to dive too much into the detail of rehabbing these conditions or common things that cause it because I have videos around the rest of the channel that talk about all of the things I mentioned. What I want you to do is actually get a good understanding of what's going on at the joint, the key structures in play, and how they might manifest themselves in terms of pain so that you can get an understanding of what might be going on with your ankle or just to get a better standing, understanding sorry, of this fantastic joint. So let's kick off with possibly the most commonly issued, uh, commonly injured issue at the ankle, um, which is the ankle sprain. So effectively, either side of the ankle, we have um, what we can often term our collateral ligaments on the side of the joint. But if we start with the common ones, the ones that live on the outside, and we can often call this um, the TFL ligaments, or ATFL, PTFL, but it stands for the, the Taylor fibular ligament. Now, what that means is this small lower leg bone, or the thinner lower leg bone, I should say, and called the fibula, and the talus bone living in here, has ligaments that connect it. So they're running in this outside the ankle. And this is the one where if you roll what we call an inversion sprain, roll that ankle inwards, put your foot down an uneven bit of ground, step off a curb and your foot rolls, and you get typically a lot of pain around the outside of the ankle. So we have the bony bits on the bottom of the ankle that we call our malleolus, that's the end of the fibula bone. So if you've got a lot of swelling around that area, sore around that area, often a clear mechanism of injury, as I say, on this outside, often this rolling of the foot underneath our body, um, that's very much likely to be an ATFL. And by, uh, far the most common condition that we might see at the ankle, particularly in terms of acute injuries. Now, on the other side, we also have sets of ligaments connecting the bones on the inside of the ankle. And the most common one here is what we term the deltoid ligament. These are less frequently injured than the outside of the ankle. The ankle on the inside is inherently, because we have this bigger bone here, it's much stronger on the inside of the ankle than the outside. And you can kind of see that from the makeup of the ankle here, John. So it's less likely to get injuries, but that's where we get a deltoid ligament. So that bony bit on the inside of your foot that we call the medial malleolus, medial meaning on the inside, that might be um, lending itself towards a deltoid ankle sprain. And a therapist would typically like to fix the upper leg and start to rotate the foot into different directions. So we test those ligaments and start to see what might manifest itself in pain. Ultimately, you wanna to get to work on encouraging a return to movement and then building strength, particularly around balance, because ligaments have a big part to play in terms of balance. So that is an important thing to do. Now, after ankle sprains, one super, super common condition that we see is what we term plantar fasciitis. Now the plantar fascia is a structure that lives along the bottom of the foot. It runs right the way across the bottom of a foot. Fascia is a connective tissue, and we want this to be nice and strong. It gives what we call tensile strength to the foot. Um, but the problem is when we're using these feet a lot, taking hopefully our 10,000 steps a day, that we can start to put a lot of pressure through this plantar fascia. It's very much linked up into the calf muscles in here. So if we get tight in those calf muscles, that can pull on that plantar fascia. But how does this feel? Well, this I call this the hobble to the bathroom condition, and you'll find lots of videos on our channel about this. Because what we typically might find if we wake up after sleeping and we go to put our foot down on the floor, we get a lot of soreness in the bottom of the foot. It becomes awkward to walk. Once we get going, it might ease out. But typically it's that, on weight bearing, we feel that pain on the bottom of the foot here, very much on the underside. Typically can uh, affect uh, two kind of key areas, one being the medial arch of the foot, the sort of domed inside aspect, or two, the point where it attaches into our heel, what we call the calcaneus. So if you've got pain around that base of heel or in that inside the arch, and it's sore when we walk and the more we walk and things, or particularly first thing in the morning, then it's well worth checking out plantar fasciitis. 
But we've got some, also some other injuries that are super common, but I find often missed or misdiagnosed. And that's because we have some um, muscles coming into this ankle that can be big players. So first of all, I mentioned them earlier, but on the back of our lower leg here, we have our calf muscles. So that's typically our gastrocnemius and soleus. Now, all muscles have a tendon. The tendon attaches the muscle to the bone, so it can create some movement. So if you imagine our calf muscles are here, what happens to this Achilles tendon that they use? So we have a tendon that starts around here and it runs right down and attaches onto the base of the heel. So that when this muscle contracts, it creates movement at the ankle, and what we call plantar flexion, the foot being planted down. But if we use those muscles or get some dysfunction in those muscles, um, and it can start to irritate the tendon, and then we might feel pain, particularly at the back of the ankle. So if you're feeling pain at the back of the ankle and you find that something like going up onto your tiptoes recreates the pain or makes it sore, or just using um, your ankle a lot, then that might lend itself towards an Achilles tendon injury. But we've also got a deeper calf muscle that we term our tibialis posterior. And again, we have we know how common this is. You only have to look at my YouTube video and see the video that I've done about tibialis posterior syndrome to see how popular that video is and how many people are suffering with this pain. It's a deep calf muscle that again has a tendon, doesn't attach onto the back of the ankle, but comes down and attaches onto the inside of the ankle. So um, on the almost at the inside of the foot. So if you get this pain kind of running down and it's running around this medial malleolus because the tendon wraps around the inside here and runs down into the inside of the foot, then it's well worth checking out our tibialis posterior syndrome. We often call it PTTD, posterior tibial tendon dysfunction. And then the same on the outside. I mentioned that we have a tendon running into the inside of the foot here. On the outside, we can see what we call our metatarsal bones. This is what we term the fifth metatarsal. And the outside calf muscle running down the outside of the leg is our perineal muscles. And they have a tendon that comes down and actually attaches onto that fifth metatarsal. So I might often see people experiencing pain coming around the outside of what we call the lateral malleolus, the bony bit on the outside of the foot, running down the outside of their foot. And we find that when we start investigating these perineal muscles on the outside of the leg, they can be really sore as well. So lots of things going on at this ankle. In some ways, I consider it the most vital joint. And you will see videos on my YouTube channel where I talk about it having the most important movement of dorsiflexion and the ability to walk and run and things. But we have lots of structures coming into it. So to briefly recap, we have our ligaments, the ATFL ligament on the outside, the deltoid ligament on the inside that can bring about ankle sprains quite commonly. We've spoken about the plantar fascia on the bottom. We've spoken about the Achilles tendon that runs in and attaches onto the back of the heel here. And we've spoken about the tibialis posterior running through the inside and the perineal tendons running along the outside there. One final thing to consider is we can also get what we call a high ankle sprain. And this is where we have a, a disturbance to the um, lining here, it's what we call the interosseous membrane that connects our two bones. So the tibia and the fibula, albeit uh, different bones, are actually connected. And sometimes if we do a roll of the ankle, a damage to the ankle, it's quite common that we can disturb that. So if you get pain kind of running up that shin coming off of an ankle sprain, then that's very much worth checking and asking the question about a high ankle sprain as well. I hope that's been helpful for you. What I wanted to do was a deep dive into some of these key areas and how they might feel if we're starting to suffer any pain around the ankle so that you can get a better understanding. But what I would encourage you to do is if any of these conditions have resonated with you, pop those into my YouTube channel and I will have a video where I talk about that condition and that condition alone and perhaps how you can uh, treat it, rehab it and ultimately get rid of it. So I hope that's been helpful for you. If it has and you made it this far in the video, you need to hit that like button because that will show me the more likes that this stuff gets. Firstly, it helps other people to see it. But secondly, I'm always looking at the amount of likes so I know what type of content you want to see. So if you've made it this far, maybe it's this, this type of content that you and others want to see. So smash that like button so I can know that. I'll be hugely grateful. And also, subscribe. Why not subscribe? Join us, part of our community here. I try and come back to all comments on videos as well. Hopefully you can see that on my previous video. So drop me a comment, let me know what you think of the video, ask me some questions around the ankle and I'll be straight back to you. Here's another video to help you on your way and I'm going to look forward to seeing you once you've liked and subscribed on the next video.